Hey everybody, Spaz here, and it's time for me to discuss a band by the name of Split Ends. A lot of you may be familiar with Neil Finn's work with Crowded House, or maybe his work with the later period uh, Split Ends, but they have a rich and wonderful history that needs to be explored if you're a fan of good music. The band started in the early 70s, formed by uh, singer-songwriters Phil Judd and Tim Finn. Uh, Tim Finn was the, the was the light part of the band, you, you know, the happier, prettier uh, songs. Whereas Phil Judd was the darker part, you know, very creative and 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 uh, just strange and odd and 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 he really created this unique sound. Put them both together, and it's what made. But then so special in those early days, uh, the fact that they were two different sides sparring together. And uh, on Tim, Tim's songs, you can hear the dark underbelly. And on uh, Phil's songs, you can hear the lightness of uh, Tim Finn. But let's go back. This was not the first album released, but this is a collection of the earliest recordings. This is all pre-first album singles and such. And uh, it's more folksy, I guess, more prog folk, uh, a lot of shorter songs. And, you know, there are some, some, some longer songs on there. But this was really the formative sound. And you could hear both Phil and Tim coming into their own on that album. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, the band's first album was Mental Notes. And I want you to take sort of a mental note of that cover, no pun intended, uh, because this album here... Uh, it was more progressive. It was it was more creative, more dynamic, longer songs, stranger passages, uh, and and you know that that dark and light mixing together, and it just sounded absolutely wonderful. Uh, definitely a, a unique sound. A lot of people compare them to Peter Gabriel era Genesis. Um, it's more original than that, but I see where those people are coming from. Uh, I don't hear that, but um, that's fine. Uh, it is a wholly unique album. Then the band members went into the studio uh, the next year with Roxy Music guitarist Phil Manzanera, and they recorded an album called Second Thoughts. Uh, this album is could literally uh, mean uh, you know it's their second album, or um, maybe they just wanted to reinterpret songs off the first album, which is what really most of this album is. It's it's re-recordings with songs off of Mental Notes plus a few new songs. Uh, the songs do ha sound more layered, more complex, uh, better produced, obviously, with Phil Manzanera uh, twiddling the knobs. But the interesting thing about this album, this is the original cover. This is when they went all uh, um, geometric hairstyles and makeup and and weird clothes and, and performances, and they became more of a theatrical band, um, even, even on their album covers. Interesting thing, though, is this album here, Mental Notes, was their debut album. This is a re-recording of most of Mental Notes, plus some other tracks. And when this album came out in the U.S., they called it Mental Notes, and they slightly altered the album cover. So the Mental Notes in America is slightly different than this cover, but it's the music on this album. Confusing? Okay. I get it. But by that time, Phil Judd left the band after Second Thoughts. It was over and done. Um, I believe that he came back maybe a few times, but it just never worked out. Um, the, the chemistry didn't seem to sort of blend together anymore. A lot of other members came and left, but the core of the band was Tim Finn, keyboardist Eddie Rayner, and percussionist Noel Crombie. Those are sort of the standbys that were there from the beginning until the end. So after Phil Judd left, they needed a new guitar player. So Tim calls his brother Neil and says, hey, you want to join the band? And dysrhythmia is the result. They're still wearing those geometric hairstyles and crazy clothes. But the sound's a little bit more refined. Uh, the songs are shorter. Uh, the arrangements are more geared towards... Uh, the conventional um, pop song format. Uh, there are a few songs co-written with Phil Judd, 
but uh, Neil Finn is the guitarist and backing vocalist on this album. He does not write or sing lead on any song on this album. Dysrhythmia is a fantastic release. Uh, if I thought Second Thoughts was a great album, then Dysrhythmia I thought was even better. Dysrhythmia is definitely a step in a poppier direction. Um, then they began recording in Luton, England, uh, laying down demos for... Uh, an album that would eventually become Frenzy. But up to that point, they were just laying down demos, uh, which were later compiled. They, they remained unreleased in the vaults for, gosh, 30, 35 years or so, until they came out as the Rootin' Tootin' Lootin' Tapes. And um, these tracks, almost every single thing on there was unreleased for decades. The songs were well known amongst collectors because the tapes did circulate and there were bootlegs uh, floating around, but the Rootin' Tootin' Lootin' tapes remained unreleased for years. And it is actually the the the, the link between Dysrhythmia and their next album, uh, Frenzy. Uh, but this version here, I just wanted to point out, is actually the fan club only two CD version that also includes a bonus disc featuring even more tracks. Most of these tracks ended up on Frenzy uh, in different forms, but there are two tracks there that were Phil Judd pen tracks that never made it anywhere else. And the song So This Is Love is incredible. Uh, but Rootin' Tootin' Lootin' Tapes is something you should add to your collection if you don't own it already. The next real studio album was Frenzy. This remains my favorite Spadenz album. This album was more earthy, more acoustic, uh, more pop oriented. Neil Finn was writing songs and singing them, and it actually ended up being a fantastic album. It didn't get a lot of great reviews. Then Icy Red came out, and Icy Red was a single that had a lot of punk energy, and uh, it, it became a hit in Australia, so they tagged it onto this album. This album doesn't sound anything like Icy Red, but it's still filled with great, wonderful songs and some of Tim Finn's best vocals on this album. The band's next album was their big one. It was called True Colors. This is the album with I Got You On It and uh, I Hope I Never and Shark Attack and Nobody Takes Me Seriously and um, lots of lots of great songs. This, uh, this cover here uh, came out in many different colors uh, and it is a great album. This, of course, was really when... Neil Finn stepped up. Tim Finn was still the main member, but Neil Finn was really making his presence known. If he frenzy, he 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 came out swinging. But this is really when he kicked everybody in the nuts. Uh, speaking of kicking in the nuts, the follow-up album Corroboree was released as Wyata in the U.S. with a slightly different cover. This features One Step Ahead, Hard Act to Follow, um, History Never Repeats, another great album. And this and this, of course, are the classic New Wave albums that uh, people love. But that, as you could tell, they weren't always that band. Uh, then their next album came out, produced by Hugh Padgham. It was called Time and Tide. This album was a few steps above True Colors and Wyatt. Very warm and rich and a lot of textures to this album. Uh, it may not have had as many hit single per se uh, that, that got played on U.S. radio stations. I think the only things that really got played here were Six Months in a Leaky Boat and Dirty Creature, but it is basically an album that defined their career. Uh, at that at that point, Tim Finn decided to record a solo project. He wasn't planning to go solo, just record a solo album and put it out. It became huge, and he won many awards, and by the time they reconvened in the studio to record Conflicting Emotions, he was sort of running short on songs. Um, before I continue, this cover is by former member Phil Judd, uh, but anyway, um, this is an album that um, Neil Finn dominated uh, songwriting-wise. Um, I don't think that he was really ready for it yet. Uh, he's got a lot of great songs on it. It's still a great record. But I think it's just sort of an album that was created because they had to put out an album. Maybe the pressure from the record company. They weren't quite ready to do it yet. So most of it is Neil Finn, and there's a couple... Tim Finn songs, but they are definitely not his best. Uh, but this is definitely still an album to get because it's heads and shoulders above their competition. Spinners were always an original, unique band. Um, after that album came out, because of Tim's 
crazy success as a solo artist. He split the band to pursue that solo career, and the rest of the band soldiered on for one more album. See you round. This is pretty much half Neil Finn, and the other half of the album is spread out amongst the other band members. I think this is a good album. And I think that Neil's songs, which basically took up side one of the album, I think that they were better than his songs on conflicting emotions. And they really pointed in the direction that he was headed. You know, just better melodies, you know, more, more direct. Uh, and it was actually quite fantastic. Uh, so See Around is definitely something you should add to your collection. Before we discuss the other projects, here are a few things I wanted to mention. Um, there were two Split Ends box sets that came out. One that covered uh, Up Through Frenzy, and the next box covered uh, True Colors Up Through um, See Around. And each box featured a disc of rarities, and those are the discs. This is the one for the second box, and this is the one for the first box. There's also a great two CD collection called Spellbound, which covers Spinnin's entire career. If you don't own any of their albums or don't own a proper best of, this is a great collection. If you want to pause that, you can look at the track listing. And finally, this is another great collection called The Other Ends, and it has a few Spinnin's tracks, like live B-sides, but the majority of the CD is the band's offshoots, uh, such as um, Schnell Fenster and The Swingers, and Phil Judd and Tim Finn and The Largest Living Things and Citizen Band and The Makers and lots of uh, collaborations and such. A really great collection of super rare singles and album tracks that no fan should be without. Another great collection is Enzo. This is actually Eddie Rayner, uh, the keyboardist of Spadenz, uh, put together a symphony orchestra to perform Spadenz songs and he called in some of his friends to, to help him out, including Neil and Tim Finn, Dave Dobbins, Sam Hunt, etc. Probably best track on this, in my opinion, is Stuff and Nonsense, which is a Tim song, but Neil sings it on this album. And that's a really nice collection to uh, get into. If you want to know more about Spadenz before I continue, you can always get the Stranger Than Fiction book written by um, bassist Mike Chun. He was bassist during the early years. This is, I believe, probably out of print by now. Uh, but it features pictures and a lot of information on Split Ends uh, covering their entire career. Obviously, uh, the years that Mike Chun was in the band, uh, there's a lot more detail to it, but it does do a very fine service to the rest of their career as well. So you may want to check that out. Uh, Kindle, uh, maybe try Amazon Kindle if it's not available physically. Uh, but let's talk solo careers. Uh, first, I'll deal with the first main member to leave, which is Phil Judd. As you remember, Phil Judd left and was replaced by Neil Finn. Uh, Phil, first off, uh, one of the things he did is he formed Swingers. And this here is, uh, this is the American cover and title of their first album, first and only album, called Counting the Beat. The Australian New Zealand version was called uh, Practical Jokers, and it had... Uh, different songs uh, than the American album, but all the songs on both versions are on this collection there. Definitely check that out. After he left Swingers, uh, he put out in the U.S., he put out a, a EP under his own name, Phil Judd, uh, and the EP was called The Swinger. Now, those songs were actually pulled from an Australian album called Private Lives, and this album here, pretty much the first half of the album is... The Swinger EP that was released in the U.S. And then there's additional tracks as well. So you may want to track that down. Um, Phil also did like soundtrack work. But eventually he formed a band called Schnell Fenster. Uh, with former Spadenz members Nigel Griggs and Noel Crombie. They put out two albums. Uh, this is their first. Schnell Fenster. And since then Phil has been doing a lot of art. and, and uh, But especially recording. And he's put out a slew of albums, uh, some of which are featured here. He's working on a new one. Uh, he is extremely talented singer-songwriter, very quirky, very unique, lots of layers in his music. Uh, you can strip away three or four layers and you're still going to have a great song left. Uh, but definitely Phil Judd should be investigated. Uh, and uh, you can find him on Facebook and on the interwebs. The next main member to leave was Tim Finn. He released his first solo album in 1983, and that was uh, Escapade. 
and that is a fantastic record. Uh, it came out between Time and Tide and Conflicting Emotions, and it is stellar from beginning to end. Believe it or not, Ricky Fatar co-produced this album, and he was uh, Stig O'Hara in The Ruddles, and he played with the Beach Boys as well. That's besides the point. This next album was a more maybe socially conscious album called Big Canoe. Uh, very big production, maybe a, bit, a little bit too big for Tim Finn, but it's still a fantastic record, a bunch of great songs. His voice is still wonderful. Uh, then, of course, there's the self-titled album. This came out after his brother Neil Finn uh, had a lot of success with Crowded House. That album was followed by Before and After. Another great album. This includes a song co-written with uh, Richard Thompson. Uh, there's also this little collection here, which I believe is like a fan club thing or a tour, uh, sort of a mini album. But included on this is, uh, as a hidden bonus track at the very end, is the Coca-Cola theme that he recorded for the um, Coca-Cola Kid movie starring Eric Roberts. That's another Tim Finn. Uh, then, of course, there's Say It Is So and Feeding the Gods. And then what I think was his best solo album since Escapade, Imaginary Kingdom, which is just wonderful. Uh, the Conversation, which is equally wonderful. Uh, that features uh, a few old Split Ends members on it, but it's very modern Tim Finn. And finally, The View is Worth the Climb, which was his latest solo album to date. Uh, he's said that he's not going to be recording solo albums anymore, but he is concentrating on on uh, other things like writing for uh, writing for stage. Tim was also involved in a project called Alt, uh, featuring uh, see uh, Liam from Hot House Flowers and Andy White, uh, who is a uh, Irish singer songwriter. And that album is called Altitude, and that's a great collaboration between the three talents. And finally, that leaves us with Crowded House. Here's the deluxe editions of their albums. Um, this was the big album that included Don't Dream It's Over and Something So Strong. Temple of Low Men, very, very, very uh, overlooked and underrated album. This, I believe, is better than the first album. And, of course, the best Credit House album is Woodface, in my opinion. Uh, this is when Tim Finn joined the band and they became a quartet. Uh, too bad that didn't last, but it was followed up by an album that's almost as good as Temple of Low Men and that is called Together Alone. And uh, the band split after that, and uh, Neil Finn went solo. But there was an Afterglow, which is a collection of rarities and uh, unreleased and B-sides. And uh, after his solo career, uh, a couple of years, the band did reunite for two more albums, deluxe editions of those. And of course, in between some of those Credit House albums, Neil Finn released some uh, solo albums. Seven Worlds Collide features Neil Finn and Friends, including Johnny Marr from The Smiths. And I will tell you, Neil Finn and Johnny Marr doing the Smiths song, There Is a Light That Never Goes Out, is the second best version of that song. Uh, I guarantee that. This project led into a studio project called Seven Worlds Collide. Lots of great stuff. It's a two CD set and should definitely be tracked down if, if uh, you can find it. Seven Worlds Collide. Uh, he's also released other solo albums. He's released um, an album with his wife Sharon uh, under the name Pajama Party. Uh, Neil has released a, a live album with Paul Kelly. He's released uh, an album with his son Liam. And um, But I think his best solo release of all, outside of Crowded House, is Out of Silence, which is an absolutely wonderfully stellar, beautiful album it's just an album that really shows his his true talent. And, you know, I'm a Tim Finn person. A lot of my friends are Neil Finn people. And sometimes we get into punch-ups. And sometimes we send each other to the hospital. Uh, you know, no, Tim Finn's better. No, Neil Finn's better. Uh, but you know what? There's no need for us to argue because there are two Finn Brothers albums. This one here was originally released under the name Finn, but then they changed it to Finn Brothers this here is the better album. This is absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is so warm and rich and beautiful. Uh, this has a lot of great songs. This has even better songs. But that's my opinion. 
But hey, that's all I have to say about Split Ends for now. I mean, I could go on for hours. And there are albums that I don't have. And there are albums that I've just misplaced and are buried somewhere around here. But I hope you got a gist of this great, wonderful band. I've been a fan for 40 years. They've been such a big, important part of the soundtrack of my life. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you stuck it out. And I hope to see you next time. And uh, we'll smell you later. <laughs>